I'm Emily with Mid Columbia Fisheries Enhancement Group, and today we are going to be dissecting uh, two adult Chinook salmon. We're going to start with the external anatomy and then we'll move into the internal anatomy. So we're going to start from the head and we'll work our way down the body till we get to the tail. Um, if we start with the head of this fish here, we can see that there are two little holes on each side. These are the fish's nostrils. Fish do not use nostrils for breathing like humans do. Fish use nostrils for smelling. They have an eyeball, much like humans do too. They use them for the same thing, for seeing. But you can, I don't know if you guys can tell here, but they don't have any eyelids, um, which we do. Um, we can go inside the mouth, and then we can look and say that they have these rows of teeth. And they also have a black tongue, and there is also teeth on the tongue. And then we'll move up. And we have this flap right here, and it kind of has a hard bony structure. This is the operculum, and the operculum is just another name for a gill cover. And so we can look inside, and we can see all of these kind of like hair-like structures. And these are the gills, and actually these really soft parts are the gill filaments. And we'll get more into the gills in a little bit. And then we'll go over some of their fins. So the first fin up here they're gonna have one on each side. This is going to be the pectoral fin. And if you think about like humans, our chest muscle is called our pectoral muscle. And so if you think about a fish, like a human, it's kind of gonna be like where their shoulder or chest was. So this is gonna be their pectoral fin. We'll move down the fin. We have two fins on each side here. And these kind of think of it like a human again. These are gonna be the fish's pelvic fins or kind of like where our hip bones would be. And then we have this fin, it only has one. And so it's gonna go all the way down here and this is called the anal fin. And then we can go up the fish and there's one long fin on the top that is called the dorsal fin. And then we have this guy right over here and this is an anapose fin. And the purpose of all of these fins, so the dual fins are gonna be for steering. So kind of think of these as like arms and legs for us. And so those are gonna be for navigating in the water. These two fins on top and bottom are gonna be for bounce. So the fish doesn't roll around in the water like a log. It's gonna be able to stay straight and swim. And then we have the anapose fin, which um, they use this to identify if it's a wild run fish or a hatchery run fish. And there was a purpose for it. So it does function, it does have a purpose. Um, in really, really fast waters, they can use this tail for a little bit of direction, but waters haven't been that fast in a really long time, so they don't really need it anymore. And the last fin is the biggest, which is the caudal fin, which is the tail fin. And that is gonna be where they get all of their momentum to swim forward. And then we can see the skin of the salmon is really shiny and you can see all these scales on it. So scales and slime have a special purpose too. So the scales are kind of like rings of a tree and they grow more lines the older the salmon is and they help protect the salmon. And then over the scales, they're gonna have a layer of slime. And that slime has a purpose too. And that slime is gonna be really good for getting out of the way of predators and be able to slide through the water really easily and quickly. It's also a nice protective layer that protects them from viruses and bacteria and diseases inside the water. So it keeps them healthy also. And then there's one more piece. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's a little bit hard, but there is a line that runs. It's kind of usually where the color changes on the fish and it runs all the way down and that is called the lateral line. And so fish, you can kind of see, they don't have ears like humans do. They don't have a hole in the side of their head. They have an inner ear that can use sound through vibrations. And they also hear sound through this line on their body. And so there's a whole bunch of little holes inside this line and they can feel pressure changes in the water. So they're gonna sense if something is around it or near it, if there's danger, if it needs to swim away, they can sense it through vibrations, much like our eardrum works. They have a lateral line that kind of does that same cool thing. And then I guess we can explore the per operculum and the gill cover a little bit more. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna cut the operculum off. We can see that it's just kind of a thick bony structure. So we'll set that there. And then we can see the gills a little bit better here. And I'm gonna cut out one set of gills and explain how these work. Okay, so here we have a gill 
And so I said before, these light parts that are really soft are called the gill filaments, and they are what are going to make sure we get the oxygen out of the water and into our body. We have this kind of hard U shape here. That is the gill arch and it holds the shape. And then we have these structures that kind of look like teeth and they're serrated and really jagged. And those are going to be on the inside of the mouth. And so what happens is you can imagine when you're swimming in the water and your mouth has to be open for breathing, for life in general, for drinking and just swimming and eating. And so sometimes when you ingest water, there's going to be some things that you can eat alongside of it. And so if we look in the mouth of this one, you'll probably see it a little bit better. But we can see that there's all those gill rakes on the inside. So what happens is those gill rakes decide what is going to be food and go down to the esophagus and what is going to be water and have to leave through the gill or the operculum here. And so they're going to take the oxygen out of the water and it's going to exit out through those gills. So that is the full external anatomy of the salmon. And oh, I forgot one part actually. Um, the salmon have an opening on their bottom here, and this is called the vent. The vent or the urogenital opening. So any waste that the salmon produces from liquids or from eating is going to be expelled through that um, opening. And it's also going to release the um, reproductive, either the eggs or the milts will come out of the vent as well. And so when I do the internal anatomy of the salmon, I'm gonna start from the vent and I'm gonna cut in between the pelvic fins all the way up to the pectoral fins up here to the chest area, and then we'll explore the inside. One thing I should talk about too, sorry, this is a little jumpy, but the coloring of the fish. So the coloring of the fish is super important. Um, so it's all, it's called cryptic coloring. So it's all about camouflage. So if you were a predator and you were going to try to eat a salmon and you're swimming in the water and you or you're swimming above the water and you look down you're going to see all these tiny little dots or spots and that is going to blend in really really well with the gravel on the bottom of the river and then if you're a predator and you're swimming inside the water and you're looking at the fish straight on this one hasn't it's not as shiny as it used to be but it was really shiny and bright and so it's going to look just like water if you're a predator in the water and then the bottom of the fish it's usually a lot brighter of a color, but if you were a predator and you were swimming below in the water and looking up and you saw a really bright white belly, you would hopefully just mistake that belly for the sun or something bright above the water and you wouldn't want to eat this if you were a predator. So their camouflage coloring is super important to how they survive also. So now we'll go into the internal anatomy of the salmon. And so like I said before, I'm gonna cut from the vent in between the fins all the way up. So when we see the size difference of these two fish, we might have thought that that big one was going to be the male and the small one was going to be the female. But actually, we can see when we open it up that the smaller one is actually a male and we would call this a jack. So a jack is an early returner. So that means this guy didn't spend as much time in the um, ocean or the salt water as some of the other really big male adults that came in. And so it's kind of interesting, but usually the males are about the size of that really big female that we saw before. So the first thing we see when we open up the salmon is we see this really big long structure right here and since this is a male and how I knew is because it's really long big structure so this is the salmon's milt sac this is where that liquid is made that fertilizes the eggs called milt and so I can cut it out carefully
So these are the salmon's reproductive organs. He has one on each side of him. So we can turn him over. Well, yeah, let's give him a flip around. Then we can see his other one. But on top of it, I want you guys to see this here. This really large red structure is the salmon's liver. And the liver is the largest organ inside the salmon. And then we have, so now I'm gonna cut the milk sack out first and then we'll explore the liver. So you can see the milk sack all the way goes and then you can see that it connects all the way at the vent. There is two milk sacks. So now we can see the liver in here. This is really big red organ. So I'm gonna take my smaller knife. Maybe before we can take it out, we can find the gallbladder. The gallbladder is very tricky. It's this guy right here. So this is the salmon liver, and if you can see that green little dot right there, that is going to be the salmon's gallbladder. And so what a gallbladder does is a gallbladder helps break down fats. And so humans have gallbladders, they do the same thing, they help us break down fats. Humans can live without gallbladders. If we get our, we sometimes people have to get their gallbladders removed. When that happens, they can still live a perfectly normal life, but they do have to watch what they eat since it does break down those fats and oils. Since it does break down. <laughs> so the gall... <laughs> the gallbladder breaks down fats and oils, so humans can live perfectly fine without it, but they do have to watch what they eat. And then our, cause our body can't break it down as easily. And then our liver is what helps um, secrete some nutrients in the food. And it also destroys old blood cells and help maintain proper levels of blood chemicals and sugar. And it also helps with digestion. So humans have livers, ours do the same thing. They filter, we cannot live without a liver. So our livers are pretty special though, and they can regrow if they're damaged a little bit, but it is important that we keep all of our organs nice and healthy. The next organ that we see in here is going to be another really red organ, and this is going to be the salmon spleen. So you can tell a lot about its organ function by the color of the organ. Usually the organs that are colored more like blood colored are gonna be the ones that help filter out the blood. And so your spleen is, um, it, white blood cells are produced in your spleen and red blood cells are recycled. And so it's also a little blood storage kind of sack for emergency situations. So there's really healthy blood stored inside the salmon's spleen also. The next organ, we will do the whole digestive tract now. So the digestive tract is really similar to a human's as well. It starts with an esophagus and they have a stomach, they have intestines, but what is special about a salmon, so here we have the whole digestive tract of the salmon and it looks really, really small. I'm gonna wipe my hands real fast. And it looks really tiny. And so it starts here. We'll try to lay it over here so we can see it. So this was her esophagus or his esophagus. And so he would eat food. They would go through those gill rakes and they would go down the esophagus. They're gonna travel inside the stomach, which is pretty nuts to think that this right here is the salmon stomach. And it's so, so tiny, but these guys have not eaten since they hit fresh water. So these guys were born in the stream. 
they went out to the ocean, they ate as much as they can, and as soon as they hit that fresh water to come back to spawn, they stopped eating. That's why his stomach is so, so small. And then after its stomach, it has this guy right here, and it has a whole bunch of kind of, looks like kind of like those gills almost, and it looks kind of like a neck. And so these are like little fingers, and it's called the pyloric cica. Humans do not have a pyloric cica, but what the pyloric cica does is it excretes an enzyme that helps break down food. So it kind of like what our stomach acid does, right? So you have stomach acid, it breaks down the food and pulls the nutrients out. This is what's going to break down that food for us, or for the salmon. And then after the pyloric cica, here you see that we have an intestine, and the intestine runs all the way to the length of the body, and any waste that is produced inside that stomach from the pyloric cica is gonna be expelled through the vent as fish poop. And so it's super tiny though, because he has not eaten in a long time. Now we will go to the heart of the salmon. The heart of the salmon is in its own special little chamber up behind. So there's a little wall kind of membrane in here, and then the heart is inside here. So I'm gonna cut the heart out. And the heart function is super similar to the function of human hearts too. So these guys have a two chamber heart, humans have a four chamber heart. The heart is what is going to plump pump the blood throughout the whole body of the salmon and get those nutrients in. If I squeeze it, you can see that that is the valve and that is where the blood would pump from and go all throughout the body of the salmon. And then I think one of the coolest parts of the salmon is right here. This balloon structure is exactly what it looks like. It is a giant balloon inside a fish's body and this is called the swim bladder. So the swim bladder runs throughout the whole back of the salmon and it's filled with air and it could change the pressure of how much air is inside of it. So you have to think about how fast these guys can swim through a water column and they can be really deep down inside of a big pool and they can swim all the way up to the surface to catch a fly. And so if you guys have ever been swimming and you try to swim to the bottom of a pool and your ears feel like they have pressure behind it, that's because there's a different pressure on the outside. So this helps regulate for that pressure change. So if there is salmon, and you want to swim to the top to get a really nice tasty fly, you are going to deflate your swim bladder as you go up so that, or you're gonna inflate it, sorry. You're gonna inflate it as you go up so you have more air and it's easier to go to the surface. And then if there's something scary that's gonna get you like a bird, you're gonna swim all the way down and your swim bladder is gonna lose air and that way you can swim fast into the deep ends of the water. And so we can cut them out and it looks so different once you cut it out versus how it is inside the body. So it already deflated. So we can just cut it out really carefully because there is an organ behind it also. So this is that swim bladder now, right? It just looks kind of like a little rubber worm and it feels really slimy, but it's a nice thin balloon that they can use to help move throughout the water column. The last organ we have is this dark red organ and it runs throughout the whole backside of the salmon. And this is actually the salmon's kidney. So humans have kidneys, we have two kidneys. We could live with just one, but we have two. And it does the same thing for the salmon as it does for humans. It has a lot of purposes. It removes waste from our blood. It what produces our urine. But for salmon, it also helps with osmoregulation, which I don't think you guys have heard me say osmoregulation before, but that just means what's happening on the outside of the salmon is gonna be even with the inside of the salmon. So we have to think about when these fish are in salt water, their bodies need to stay fresh and not too salty. So they have to bounce that salt content out in order for their bodies to be happy or also in the opposite. So if they're in fresh water, they still need a little bit of salt in their body. So they gotta make sure that they have a good bounce um, from each side. So that was the male anatomy and the female anatomy is the same, but we will open her up because she is a really, really big female. So I'm sure you guys want to see how many eggs she has inside of her. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut from the vent. I'm going to go in between the, do you remember what these are called? Pelvic fins and then all the way to the pectoral fins. Oh, we might be able to keep her eggs in the sacks, which would be super exciting. Okay. So the male had two milk sacks. She has two egg sacks. And it's so rare that we could open these and they're still inside the sack. So this female 
had all of these eggs inside of her. And so we talked about how small their stomachs were and we kind of brainstormed before when we were still in the classroom about why they would have have to stop eating once they hit that fresh water. But if you see how much room their reproductive organs take up in their body, it makes it pretty obvious why they can't eat anymore because they have to make room in order for all of these eggs to be produced or in the male's case, the milk sac to be um, produced. And so you can see she has a really big swim bladder too. And then we can open up this side and we can see all of her beautiful eggs. So these eggs would not be fertile anymore or healthy. So they wouldn't be able to make baby salmon just because she has not been alive for a while, but you can see she has so, so, so many eggs in her. You can just end it. 